Hello everyone, I'm Greg Otto with FedScoop TV and welcome to our IT Modernization Hero Series. I'm speaking with Gary Wong, the Deputy CIO of the U.S. Army. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, thank you for having me. So, federal IT managers recognize that there is an urgent need to modernize their legacy systems. What has to change in order for those systems to really speed up with the pace of technology? So, with probably the two biggest um, areas in terms of changing is how we procure um, okay. and then um, the type of dollars that we use those tend to be impediments or tends to slow us down so the idea is, is how do you get creative within those systems to improve uh, what we call speed to market okay. um, for those um, in terms of delivering IT capability to the to the warfighter. Okay so <clears throat> there is a proposed bill that is coming that would codify Tony Scott's $3.1 billion uh, revolving mm -hmm. IT fund. Um, what types of systems would be best suited for this type of fund and how might agencies get started? I know that that's geared towards civilian agencies, but in your opinion, I mean, the same enterprise technology is being mm -hmm. used in the military as the civilian side. So what do you think that sort of money could go toward, you know, upgrading? So when I first read about um, his ideas, um, I thought that was a, a good way to give a quick shot in the arm to okay. a number of um, agencies that are kind of having a tough time uh, recapitalizing their um, legacy systems. But I think care has to be taken in terms of which one has the higher payoff but can happen in the, in the shortest amount of time. Right. And so that type of criteria and the vetting of which solutions or which legacy systems I think will be very, um, will be a big factor. I mean, throwing money at monolithic kinds of um, efforts I don't think is going to make a drastic change. So what are the low-hanging fruit, kind of lower cost ones that might, you know, make a difference uh, in terms of a quick shot in the arm. <clears throat> so there are some trends going on right now. Mm -hmm. Cloud computing, of course, is a big mm -hmm. one. There's containerization, there's agile development. How do you see this being brought into government and how does it fit into any plans that you have in the next 18 months for upgrading your systems? So uh, as I have said earlier in a few other speaking engagements, uh, we're really looking forward to um, having the release of the RFP for what we call an on-premise COCO. Okay. And that on-premise uh, COCO uh, kind of cloud environment, we look for a way to how industry can get a, a foothold within the government environment. And then because we're buying it as a service, that way um, the idea of um, changing in and out the technology is really the risk is then on the industry side, not on the government side. And I think it will attract a number of government agencies. So our first one, our first foray, foray into that is um, down in Redstone. Okay. So we look to have an RFP out in May and hopefully make an award by the end of the year. And we'll have a number of the, um, there's a number of data centers in the Redstone area that are close to their per end of period of performance. And that will be a good transition mechanism to take advantage of industry. I'm, I'm very excited about watching um, what I call the data center container environment, but you'll see containers that are packed with, you know, blade servers with cooling and power. So that's a that's probably, you know, one thing that can easily be injected into that environment where they can drop ship something and quickly um, kind of um, get people to um, modernize or migrate their data and their applications. Very, very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, finally, can you share with us one success story? that you've had in upgrading legacy IT? So I would say the biggest success story that we have or that we will have is our efforts in working with DISA and the Air Force and the Navy really to um, what I call um, put firewalls on steroids in place. Okay. And the idea is, is people like to say it reduces our attack surface because we're really minimizing the number of entry points into the networks and then collapsing all of the Army networks behind it. And it's a pretty large effort when you talk about the number of uh, different commands in the Army. So MedCom, Reserve, the Corps of Engineers, the Guard, and being able to collapse their networks behind us and working together in a multi, what I call, tenant environment on the firewall. And I would say that's probably 
going to be um, our